the last shingle. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. Pretty much finished. Looks looks good if I do say so myself. Lower two thirds have been done for quite some time. Just had to finish that upper portion, which by far was the hardest part. It's higher on the ladder. There's very little access here, like I've mentioned before in the past. But it looks good and should be good for a long time. There's Elizabeth in the shop looking through looking through a book. And then we got Bubba hanging out down in the creek. Exploring and trying to keep cool. It's been really hot this week. Mid nineties, high humidity. And it's like 85 or 95 90 percent humidity right now so I'm glad to check this off the list and for the most part it is done So let's take a second and check out the new welder that I've got in the shop. This is a Weld Pro 200 GD ACDC TIG stick machine. And up until now, I've been running the old Harbor Freight 165 amp DC only. Pretty bare, bare bones welder, the old Harbor Freight machine, but it did get me by. So I'm happy to upgrade to this thing. It's got a lot of features on it that, that I like to use. And I'll share some of those with you as well. And get you a look at the quality of this thing, what you get for your money. So the first impressions on this machine, unboxing it was I was surprised at how well it was packed. They obviously have had problems with shipping in the past, like most of us have, and this thing was almost, I'm not gonna say it was foolproof or bulletproof, but packed extremely well. Metal reinforced corners, I mean the whole nine yards, custom fit foam, surprisingly well packed. So let me show you all of the stuff that this particular model come with, and then we'll try some welding out. So this particular machine came with a really nice argon flow meter. I haven't used it because I've got my own. It came with a really heavy duty foot pedal. This is metal, not plastic. I put the uh, sandpaper on there. I like the extra grip. I mean, that thing's got a lot of gravity to it. A supposed 300 amp ground clamp, which has got a heck of a spring on it. It come with all the accessories that you need for uh, your TIG torch as far as tungsten, collets, uh, cups, all that stuff that you would expect. Nice thumb switch 
if you are not using the foot pedal, you can use the thumb switch. This is a CK Worldwide torch, which is an option. It's an upgrade if you want to get this on on the um, welder you can, but I believe you pay a little more for the CK Worldwide. This is a CK17 FX, which I guess stands for flex, which is nice. This is an air cool torch. Come with a nice shield for the torch cable. I think this is a 20 foot, if I'm not mistaken, which is long enough for the majority of stuff that we need. So right off the bat, one negative thing to this, and it's not really a big deal unless you film, is that the cooling fan on this thing is exceptionally loud. Surprisingly loud, but it moves a lot of air. So I'm gonna leave this machine off because of the coolant fan to quickly gloss over the front controls on this machine. And it's set up a lot like many of the machines that I've used in the past. Some of them will have the chart on the front, which kind of helps to visualize what's going on. Some of them won't, but although it may look complicated, it's not. You have your pre-flow and your post-flow, which is the flow of the gas before the weld starts and after you've let off the pedal completely, how long you want that gas to flow you know, before, like if you want the weld puddle to cool down a little more with gas flow on it to keep it shielded while it's still hot, you can choose how long you want that gas to run after you've let off the pedal. You have your start amps and upslope, which I usually control with the foot pedal, but really nice feature if you're just using your, uh, your thumb control. Same thing over here, downslope and end amps, just on the opposite end of the weld. You have your pulse TIG, controls, peak amps, peak on time, base amps, and pulse frequency, and your AC TIG controls, AC balance, and AC frequency. If you're welding aluminum, and you can combine these two together if you're pulse welding aluminum, but you get the idea. It's really simple once you understand what all these features do. And if you look into a bit, it's really not that complicated. You have your TIG or your stick, pulse, no pulse, AC, DC, and that's pretty much it. It really is a pretty basic machine to use. You can push this down and increase your amps by 10 each click, or you can let off of it and increase your amps one at a time. And I think that's pretty nice. Sometimes you want to jump up 20 amps or 40 amps, and you don't want to click that 40 times. So that's a neat little add-on that they, that they did there. So neat little welder. Let's uh, fire it up and make a few welds with it. So here's the quick welding job that I need to do. Piece of 304 stainless, probably you know, some sort of chromoly steel deep well socket that I parted in two and beveled. Same thing here with the uh, with the extension. This is going to be an extremely deep well socket for my buddy Ma, who brought me the air compressor. He does uh, automobile lift installations, and these come in handy. Kind of hard to find, so I'm just making him a few. And I've already done one, turned out really nice, and I'm fixing to do the other. I got three to do. So let's see if we can get this thing lined up and stick it together with this Weld Pro machine. So ER308L. Stainless steel filler rod. We're gonna start out probably about 80 amps. See how that acts. Should be fine. I gotta see what our gas flow is. Just change this tank and who knows if I've bumped the regulator or not. So I'm at about, what, 10 standard cubic feet per minute, 10 or 12. And I'm gonna try that. You know, that's a little on the low side. Usually I'll run around 15 in a no draft area and any more gas than you really need to do the job obviously is waste so experiment with your gas a bit on a scrap piece see how your welder acts you may be able to save yourself you may be able to make your tank last twice as long if you carefully adjust the flow so this is not an advertisement at all I picked this up off of Amazon I wanted to try it out I have very little time on it just a gas lens set, a little gas diffuser, some Pyrex cups, some collets, and different uh, torch hardware. Wanted to see how it acts. I've used it a few times, fine so far, but we'll see. 
So if you're new to welding, a few well-placed tacks really helps out a lot with giving you a good quality straight job. Everything that's welded warps and distorts, you just have to try to counteract that and prepare for it before you really start putting the heat to something. So I'm just going around this part, putting small weld tacks about 120 degrees apart. That way, those small weld tacks hold this thing in line when I really start putting the heat to it. So these sockets are not going to go in t into a case at the Smithsonian. They're going to go into a, a working man's tool bag. And all I'm doing here is welding these things up to a, where the weld bead is proud of the socket. Taking it over to the belt sander. Knocking off all that proud weld. Make it nice and smooth and then give it a paint job. So the big advantage that this little Weld Pro machine has over the old Harbor Freight machine that I had is that it is a dual voltage machine, AC or DC. So I can weld aluminum like you see here, and all I'm doing is messing around, just welding some eighth inch, I believe it's 60, 61. Just running a bead to get the feel for this machine, see, see how it does, and so far so good. It is a smooth running little, little piece of equipment that seems like it welds just as hot as any machine that, uh, that I've used. Now this machine is also either 120 volt or 220 single phase, so you can plug it into a standard outlet, you know, if that's all you have. So one of the main things about aluminum is that it develops an oxide layer that melts way above the temperature of the base metal. So it helps to grind all that out of the way and start off with a clean piece of aluminum before you even begin to weld. And I did not do that on this bead right here because I'm messing with the AC balance of this machine. It will self-clean, but there are costs to that, getting too much cleaning, putting the excess heat into the torch on and on and on, you know, just messing around, seeing how this machine performs, and it does a great job. But, like I said, it helps to clean the aluminum first, you just get a better weld job in the end, and it's easier, everything's happier that way.
So just like the vast majority of machines on the market, this is capable of stick welding as well. I'm burning some 332nd 7018s here, anywhere between 80 and 100 amps, just seeing how this machine performs, seeing how stable of an arc it has, seeing how it starts. No complaints. This thing seems to do pretty well. So that's not bad. It actually started really well considering this is a crusty, rusty piece of steel. There was 80 amps, 90 amps, and 100 amps with a 332nd 7018. So nothing wrong with that. Stick wheel's just fine. So bear with me for a second. If you're a seasoned welder, I really want to start at the very beginning, the very basics, and explain a few things that may not make sense to the person who's just beginning in welding. They're interested in it yet intimidated by all the kit that uh, a welder like this comes with. I want to see if I can't simplify a few of the things because I know there's a lot of guys and girls out there who would love to get into arts and crafts or just general repair, but yet they look at all the options that a machine has like this and they're just like, yeah, forget it, too much for me. It's not. Let me explain a few of these things. Try to simplify them. All right, so if I lose you at any point during this explanation, just hold your hand up and go, eh, eh, eh and then I'll try to get to your question. So let's start at the very beginning, and that is how you start or stop a weld. And with this machine and with almost all of them, you have two options. You have a foot controller or you have a finger switch. Now, if I can, I prefer the foot controller because it gives me proportional control from zero to 100% of my preset amps on my machine. So just for example, let's say we've set our machine to 100 amps. If we push this all the way down, we're getting 100 amps out of the torch. Halfway, 50%, nothing would be nothing, obviously. So I like the foot controller if I have the ability to weld at a bench or I'm in a situation where I can have the use of my foot. But there are a lot of times welding where you don't have the ability to use a foot pedal, so you would opt for the finger control bound up in some pipes in some factory, welding under the hood of some car, or up on a ladder. I mean, it's, it's endless. I wind up using a finger switch all the time, even though I prefer the foot pedal. This happens to be simple on-off switch, so just a momentary switch. Turn it on, whatever your preset amps, max preset amps on your machine is, that's what happens. So if you're set to 100% or 100 amps on the machine, you push that and it immediately goes to 100 amps. There are ways to not have that happen, but just for simplicity, let's say 100% or nothing. So this machine and torch came with just a simple on-off switch, which I prefer. Now they do offer a switch that is proportional, so you can roll a knob to either increase your amperage or decrease your amperage, much like the way that the foot pedal works. In fact, it's exactly the same, except for it's controlled with your thumb. Now, I don't care much for those because it puts a lot of movement into the torch trying to operate it. And uh, if you're trying to make a precision weld, it just doesn't work out too great. So it's much easier to just on off with the momentary switch and let the machine control your weld up, up slope and your weld down slope. So because the foot pedal gives us the ability to increase or decrease amps at any time during our weld, that's really nice. Now we don't have that ability with the momentary switch, but we can program into this a upslope and a downslope. And I wanna go over that really quickly with this machine on, so if you would, bear with the noise of the fan. It just makes it much easier to explain with the machine on. So our max amp, right now is set at 80. No matter if we push the foot pedal all the way down, the only thing we can get out of this machine right now is 80 amps. So you can see the A is lit up. Lit up. A represents amps. S represents seconds. HZ represents hertz. And the percentage sign obviously would represent percentage. Let's start at our post flow or our pre flow. Sorry. We're going to scroll through the menu using these two buttons here. And the good thing about this little welder is you can go forward or reverse, which is nice. But it does reset relatively quick, so we'll be bouncing around a bit. Pre-flow. For half of a second, 0.5 seconds, before the weld starts, we want gas to flow out of this. Why? Because we want our weld area to be shielded with gas before the arc actually starts. 
that is adjustable in seconds up to one second. So right now we've got it set at half a second. Our start amps, because when we push this button, for some reason we don't want it to start out at just 80 amps, be full throttle, all of a sudden we want it to go up slow. We've got our start amp set at 10, which is the maximum or the minimum it can be on AC voltage. I think on DC it's five, but AC 10. Anyway, so it starts out light at 10 amps, and then we want it to increase like we were pushing the pedal down over a period of seconds. Right now we've got in three seconds. So after we push the button, the weld starts for three seconds, it ramps up to our peak amps, which is 80. Then we weld our hearts out and go to our down slope. Once we let off the switch, we've got two seconds programmed in. So we let off for two seconds, it ramps down like we're letting off of the foot pedal until it reaches the bottom, which is 10 amps. And then the weld or the arc stops. And then for four seconds, we have post flow. So after the welds has stopped, we have gas flowing out of this for four seconds to give our weld puddle time to cool uh, before oxygen gets to it. We don't want our molten puddle exposed to oxygen. So that's the upslope and the downslope. You can still, you can still somewhat control your acceleration and deceleration with a momentary switch. And that's how you do it on this machine. So let's quickly go over a couple of these features that I did not mention. Now I'm not going to go into detail on the pulse tick feature because there's entire videos that are dedicated to just this little section right here that are far more detailed than, uh, than the scope of this video. So we'll gloss over it, but that's it. So we can choose between TIG or stick, 2T or 4T, which is pretty neat. I mean, if you set it on 2T, you push, the switch, you weld until you're done, and you let off. That's what we all know. 4T changes the way that this switch functions. So we push and let off. The weld continues until we're done. Or at the end of the weld, we push and let off, and the weld stops. So if you're doing a really long weld and you don't want to continuously hold this switch down, that's when you'd use 4T, and there is more to it than that, but that is the gist of it. So our pulse TIG, we can control our peak on time, how long we want to be at our maximum amp. We can control our base amps, so when it comes off of peak on time, how low the amperage goes. We can control our pulse frequency, how fast we want that pulse to be. Our AC TIG, if we're welding aluminum, we can control the AC balance, the direction of current, more cleaning, less cleaning, more heat in the part, more heat in the torch, there's pros and cons, AC frequency, pretty self-explanatory, and then that's pretty much it. Choose between pulse or no pulse, AC or DC. There you go. All right, guys, that's it this week. Having that siding done is a huge weight off my shoulders. A lot of you may remember the last time I worked on it, there was snow on the ground, and I said I'd wait till warmer weather. And if I waited much longer, winter would be back, so I'm glad I can check that off the list and move on to other parts of this project that I'd like to tackle. So no broken bones and it looks great in my opinion. I don't know that I'd go back that way because of the access, but you know, it's done now and hopefully I'll never have to mess with it again. Little welder seems to be a fine machine. If you have any problems with it, I'll let you know, but it really is a, uh, a big benefit to the shop having the ability to weld aluminum having a pulse feature, you know, some of the other things that it uh, offers that the old machine did not. So if you have any problems, I'll be sure to let you know, but so far so good. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to those who tuned into the live streams that me and Elizabeth have done the last couple of weeks. We may or may not do one this week. Depends on what Elizabeth's got going on, but that's it. So thanks for watching viewers, patrons, and subscribers. You guys are awesome. And I will, See you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna scream. 
Since the day you're born, you're just a flower.